Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, hope everyone had a great weekend. I'd like to do a uh, twofer on my uh, 70s series of the week. I'm kind of straddling the line here uh, because the two series I'm showing are like uh, like 80 to 81 and maybe 79 to 80, but still Bronze Age, so uh, I don't think I'm breaking too many stringent rules here. Uh, first one I'd like to feature is uh, the revival of A Mystery in Space. Uh, it was like seven issues, ran from September of 1980 to uh, March of 1981. Uh, I really love this little run because, I mean, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of sci-fi like I know a lot of you people are. And, uh, you know, I always love the anthology stuff, you know, like all the horror and sci-fi anthology and, you know, just where uh, you don't really have a, an ongoing character. Now, Mystery in Space, you know, it uh, it did have some ongoing characters in the uh, in the original series. I think it ran from like uh, fifty one, and uh, they shut it down in like nineteen sixty six or so, I think. But you know, you had a lot of great characters in Mystery in Space. You know, you had the Star Rovers and uh, Adam Strange and Atomic Knights, and a lot of these might have appeared in uh, Strange Adventures. Uh, but same kind of stuff. But there were some, uh, you know, some little offbeat sci-fi stories in there. But this was a, a good little revival. And uh, I'm kind of filming a little bit different because I want, to, uh, want you guys to get a look, good look because these are some of my uh, higher grade copies. Uh, first one, uh, Mystery in Space 111. Uh, for all you keen-eyed collectors out there, you can tell that's a Joe Kubert cover right off the bat. And one of my favorites of his later work, it's really hard to pick a favorite Joe Kubert cover. Uh, for fans of Kubert, you know what I'm talking about. But this is just a great uh, sci-fi cover. And probably what I'm going to do is just uh, kind of give you a list of some of the writers and artists. And there's probably, you know, three to five uh, stories uh, per issue. And uh, I might give you like a, uh, I'm going to list like what I would call some of my favorites or maybe my favorite from that issue if you want to check them out. And uh, these can... Uh, be had on the cheap i mean even for higher grade copies i mean this is still a really undervalued in my opinion uh series you know like i say for fans of sci-fi it's great uh some of the writers uh in this series uh charlie boatner uh tony isabella jc harris mike barr uh you know some of them are known some of them are unknown or like lesser known i guess you could say and uh, you can kind of tells the top who the uh, artists are got Jim Apparel, Marshall Rogers, Steve Ditko, Dan Spiegel uh, I think John Salardo maybe did some inking in here uh, but it's just a it's just a great little title uh, probably my favorite uh, story in this uh, this issue was called Viewpoints and it was by a writer named Charlie Boatner and by Marshall Rogers so everybody knows who Marshall Rogers is uh, but just a great little package. Like I say, it's just a great cover. These are really nice copies. And I've got, you know, I've got several multiples of these, but these are really some of the best grades that I have. Take a look at that. Just a really, uh, really nice looking book. Number 112, another great Joe Kubert cover. Uh, like I say, a lot of the same writers and artists in some of these, uh, like Mike Barr, J.M. DeMatisse, or DeMatis, who later on uh, you know, did some of the great scripts with Keith Giffen on the uh, Funny Justice League in the late 80s. Uh, George Cashton, a longtime scripter and editor for DC. I think he worked from like 47 to 88. Uh, helped co-create Tommy Tomorrow. Uh, did a lot of the early Aquaman scripts with Nick Carty. Uh, some of the artists, uh, you know, like I say, you got Kubert on the cover, Tom Sutton, one of my favorites, Alan Weiss, Trevor Von Eden, Jerry Bingham, uh, Terry Austin, Bob Smith on some inks. Probably my favorite story, uh, uh, this one is one called The Insurrection by Mike Barr and Tom Sutton. Like I say, another uh, nice looking copy here. Great Joe Kubert art on the cover. Just really hard to beat. And like I say, these are like extremely cheap, even the high grade stuff. So I can't recommend this high and highly enough. Okay, got number 113 again. 
Another uh, great Joe Kubert cover. As you can tell. Uh, more scripts by George Cashton. Uh, Lynn Wein is in this one and more J.M. DeMatisse. Uh, got artwork by Michael Golden, Joe Staten, Jerry Grandinetti, and Joe Kubert actually did the pencils and inks on the story in here. Also, you got some Trevor Von Eden art, John Salardo. Uh, my favorite from this issue is uh, one called Gremlins, and that was done by Len Wein and Joe Kubert. Actually, uh, the cover story. Like I say, uh, more high grade goodness here. Yeah, I would have uh, I would have bought these books just for the covers, you know. Uh, I may not be a uh, notorious collector or cover collector like uh, a good friend of mine, but uh, <laughs> it is uh, they are great covers. Okay, number one fourteen, more Joe Kubert. Got some dinosaurs and astronauts on the cover. Uh, probably my favorite of this one was uh, one called uh, Killing Time Jerry Conway and uh, Tom Yates uh, who had a good run on Saga of the Swamp Thing and this issue uh, Paul Levitz does some scripts uh, Dan Mission and uh, Jerry Cohn or Gary Cohn Steve Skates who had uh, a good run on Aquaman and uh, worked for Charlton back in the 70s, Jerry Conway, as I said. Got some Steve Ditko in this one, Johnny Craig from EC fame. And more high-grade goodness. Okay. Number 115. More Joe Kubert on the cover. You just cannot beat this. Uh, scripts in this one by Mike Barr, uh, Arnold Drake. Of uh, I think he did uh, a lot of the Doom Patrol stuff for DC back in the '60s. Uh, got some great art. Uh, George Tuska, more Steve Ditko, Greg LaRoque, Dennis Cowan. And uh, Brian Bolland actually uh, did the uh, cover story. Let you get a good close look at that one. Nice high grade stuff. Uh, number 116. And on this one we have a... Uh, I wouldn't say an oddity, but uh, something you don't see from D.C. too much back then is a cover by Jim Starlin. I think you can see his signature down here. Of course, Jim was uh, a master at the sci-fi cosmic uh, type story and artwork. And this issue... Uh, let's see, Starlin on the cover. He got some more... Uh, D. Matisse scripts, Mike Barr, Marv Wolfman did a story in here, another Arnold Drake tale, uh, more Johnny Craig, Bob Smith, more Steve Ditko, Trevor Von Eden, and there's a great story in here by uh, Arnold Drake and Steve Ditko called uh, With His Head in the Stars, really a cool little tale. Let's get a close up of that one. Really nice high grade stuff. Got a lot of uh, duplicates on these. You know, like I say they're cheap to come by. Uh, got some readers. And the last issue in this run, number 117. Great cover by Dave, Dave Cockrum and uh, Dick Giordano. Call him a cyborg. Got some more scripts by uh, J.M.D. Matisse. Got a Bruce Jones story in this one. Mike Barr. Uh, got art by Carmine Infantino, Don Newton, Rick Veach, George Tuska. I think uh, Jerry Ordway did the inks on a Carmine Infantino story uh, called Lazarus Fire. It's 
probably my favorite of this issue. Nice high grade stuff. Okay, uh, second series I want to feature, more sci-fi. Uh, this uh, title's called Time Warp. Another one of my favorites. And this is a lot of great reading. Uh, this came out, I think, in uh, September 79, if I'm not mistaken. November 79. Sorry about that. And ran through, like, uh, July of 1980. All the uh, covers are done by Mike Kaluta. And uh, a little bit more bang for your buck here. You get 68 pages in each issue and probably seven to eight stories, probably eight stories in each book. Just a awesome looking cover there on issue number one. Uh, I don't know, as far as favorite stories, I reread all these recently, and uh, I don't know if it was just because it was the first issue I read as a kid or uh, just because of the talent involved in it, but you know, I, I recommend every story in this issue as uh, one is a really, really a great read. Uh, Got scripts in this one by Denny O'Neill, uh, Michael Fleischer, or Fleischer, I guess. Did a lot of the uh, Jim Aparo run on the Spectre back in the 70s. Uh, more George Cashton, Mike Barr, J.C. Harris, and Bob Rizakis. Uh, got art by uh, Rich Buckler, Steve Ditko, Dick Giordano, Tom Sutton, Don Newton, uh, Dan Atkins, Jim Aparo. Got Paul Levitz on a script. Like I say, this is just a who's who of uh, big time talent in the 70s and 80s. And uh, I can't, uh, it's really hard to pick a favorite in this one. So I just, I recommend them all. Got some nice colors on that one. Got a little ding in the corner there. Probably upgrade that one. Like I say, that Time Warp is another one you can get on the cheap. Uh, if you're just wanting to read some good sci fi. This, other than that ding, this one's a pretty solid copy. I might have a better copy somewhere, but uh, there's probably only a defect on that one. Okay, issue number two. Again, uh, more Mike Kaluta. This kind of reminds me of his work he did on uh, Carson of Venus uh, in the Tarzan and uh, Korak books back in the early 70s, uh, which was one of my favorite titles to read and stories. Uh, issue number two, uh, another all-star cast. Uh, more Paul Levitz uh, and Bob Rizakis on the scripts. D. Matisse. Got uh, Howard Chaikin. Got some Gil Kane from my good buddy John, Dr. Von Chilla. Uh, Joe Orlando, Steve Ditko. Uh, more Tom Sutton. Uh, Don Newton, Jerry Grandinetti. Probably uh, my two favorite stories in this one are uh, one called Return of the Stars by a writer named uh, Gwyan or Gwen and uh, Howard Chaikin, and another one by Demi Teese and Tom Sutton called The Truth. Really cool stories. Like I say, you can see the all-star. Uh, and Mike Nasser, he was always one of my favorite uh, pencilers. From that could say, I guess, or Michael Netzer now, as he calls himself. Uh, but yeah, just a great package. Very nice high grade cover. Time warp number two. I say this is just a short run series. It seemed like a lot of the good stuff uh, is a short run. I don't know why. Maybe it's just me. Uh, here's issue number three. More Kaluta on the cover. Like I say, uh, probably eight eight page stories in each issue. Uh, more Mike Barr and D. Matisse. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Look at my notes a little bit more carefully. Uh, Denny O'Neill, more Arnold Drake, Dan Michigan, and uh, Gary Cohn. Another who's who in the artists. Uh, Eduardo Barreto, Jerry Grandinetti, Dick Giordano, Tom Sutton, Steve Ditko. 
uh, more Don Newton and Steve Mitchell, and uh, a guy called Mads Castrillo. Castrillo. Uh, I think he was one of the uh, probably one of the Filipino artists that DC had working for him back in the seventies and eighties. There's a really uh, really good story called Rites of Spring in this one by Denny O'Neill and Dick Giordano. And another one called uh, On the Day of His Return uh, with Steve Ditko art. Really good stuff. More high-grade goodness. Might be a couple little things in this one, but uh, pretty high-grade. And these covers are just pure eye candy. Okay, a couple more to go. Issue four. Another Kaluta cover. Great purple and black background. Great colors on this. Uh, some of the highlights in this one. Uh, of course, you can see the artists at the top. So I won't be rattling those off. I got Fred Carrillo. A lot of you guys that... Uh, Red Phantom Stranger back in the 70s and uh, a lot of the mystery titles DC put out and probably war titles too. Uh, Fred Carrillo, a really good artist. Another uh, one of their Filipino finds. Like I say, more Steve Ditko. And another Filipino artist I think was back in some of the 70s stuff was uh, Joe Magpayo and uh, Ernie Patricio. Uh, a really good story called The Hole in Reality's Heart. Uh, by J.M. D. Matisse, Don Newton, and Steve Mitchell. Like I say, these are just my personal favorites. Uh, if you want to check these out, I'm sure you might find your own. But a uh, really nice copy. Hard not to get a glare. You got them in Mylar, but... Just thought I'd let you guys take a closer look at these. Really nice. And last but not least, issue five. More Kaluta on the cover. I think that gives you a list of the writers on top. Uh, Shelley Mayer, longtime DC guy from uh, Golden and Silver Age. Elliot Magan, another 70s guy. Paul Kupperberg. Arnold Drake. Uh, somebody, and I'd never heard of uh, these last two. Uh, Wyatt Gwyan uh, that I'd mentioned earlier and... Uh, Mamiya Ken looks like. It's from July 1980. Uh, my favorite story in this one was one called uh, To Conquer the Sun by Elliot Magan, uh, Jerry Bingham, and John Salardo. Uh, more Don Newton, Dick Ayers in this one. Uh, a couple of the Filipino guys, Edgar Bercaccio and Fred Carrillo, Vic Catan, uh, Charles Nicholas, Jerry Bingham, Trevor Von Eden. Really nice old package. Let's get a closer look at that. Pretty nice copy. Same Mike Kaluta cover as usual. Alright guys, uh, hope you enjoyed this as much as I did uh, doing it again. Or going through these books again I should say. And this is a uh, I just love this cover. I can't get enough of this. It's classic Joe Kubert. But anyway, for you sci-fi fans, uh, two great little runs. Uh, like I say, you can get them on the cheap. Uh, you know, can't recommend them highly enough. Uh, like I say, I hope everybody had a great weekend and uh, has a great week. And uh, I will see you soon. Onward and upward.